And I just want to begin by welcoming every one of you back to Dermo 28 Connect webinar series. Well, if you've been with us for a little bit, you've seen we've had a few different topics that we've covered in the past, and now we're focusing today on treating your sensitive clients. Yes, this is going to be a big one for you if it isn't already. We have a lot of great uh, information and content to really cover today, and we want to begin by asking that question that we need to be comfortable with. You know, how sensitive are your clients, and are they really sensitive? So fasten your seatbelts, we're gonna go ahead and jump right on in and really explore this whole ambiguous category of sensitive and or sensitized skin and what to do in your back bar, in your professional treatment room, and what to send them home with as well. So when we finish our theory, we're gonna jump right into an exciting demonstration. So for those of you joining us live, don't worry, we're going to just pause the screen a little bit, get our model ready to go, who's excited to join you today live as well. Her name is Monique, you'll meet her shortly. Um, but if you're watching this at a later date and time, um, again, we'll just be pausing it and then we'll go into our demo as well. So without further ado, grab a pen, grab a pad, grab your notepad or your tablet, Take some notes because this is really content that's going to support you in your future as well as with Dermal 28. We hope that you continue to use us or any questions or inquiries that you have about the brand and also just generally how to treat your sensitive clients. So let's jump on in and uh, let's begin by taking a look at this uh, plethora of faces that you're seeing on the screen. What do all these clients have in common? I know it's a rhetorical question, but if you take a scan over with your eyes, you will notice that yes, they're all sensitive or have some level of sensitization or sensitivity. Now you can see that some are younger, some are older, some have deeper skin hues and some have lighter skin hues. And you're gonna see that some have blue eyes, some don't have blue eyes. So you're going to see a myriad of different options of what your clients could look like that are experiencing sensitivity, intolerance in their skin, or just their skin's not agreeing with something and what can we do to be able to treat them effectively. So some of these clients, men and female, I don't have men there yet, but men and female included, some of them could possibly be genetically predispositioned to sensitive skin. Many of them have a tendency to flushing and blushing, but just because you may not be able to see the blush or see the redness doesn't necessarily mean that they're not experiencing an intolerance. We'll talk about that a little bit more in detail in a few more moments. And again, huge for us skin therapists that are watching, anytime you see sensitivity that is undealt with, it is your telltale sign to rapid aging. Yes, I know, everyone's concerned with aging, but the most fast skin that's going to age is someone that's always inflamed. So this is so important for us to understand, treating inflammation equals treating aging. Don't forget that, that's gonna be huge for us. So let's jump on in. A sensitive skin is usually, yes, your genetically predispositioned client. So that means in, when she was a child, when he was a little boy, they had flushy, uh, rosy cheeks that were so cute, not so cute after 30, but maybe Irish Celtic, uh, Celtic background or a, a very a fair skin, fair eyes, light hair, these are sometimes indicators of your genetically sensitive skin. So look at that as well, but not only that, you wanna also look at the consultation card. That is so immensely important when you're treating a sensitive skin because you wanna find out, do they have allergies? Are they diabetic? Do they have asthma? It's interesting, you can have inflammation on the inside of your body, that is also an indication, a, a kind of a sign to you when you're looking at that consultation card that they will likely have inflammation on their skin as well. So you also wanna see their lifestyle choices. What are they doing? Because they can exacerbate the triggers. So they're exacerbated by triggers like habits that are going to make matters worse. So one thing we need to understand is that skin type 
sensitivity, that means they're born with that, is not correctable. It is manageable. So in your selection of formulations, both retail and professional, you want to be able to communicate that to them and manage the inflammation and do that through lifestyle treatments and skin health and eating right. And it's a holistic approach, as you know, that's so important. So that's your sensitive skin. But what about someone who wasn't born like that? She or he could be sensitized. In fact, sometimes I experience sensitization after I work out at the gym. I'm not a sensitive skin type, but I do have and exhibit sensitization at times. And you probably see the same thing in yourself or in some of your clients and friends and family also. So it's not genetically dispositioned. So it's not determined that way. It can also, however, be exacerbated by triggers. It is correctable, however. So this you can correct through skincare, through proper treatments, both retail as well as professional back bar products. And yes, lifestyle, healthy diet, all of that as well. So we're seeing that there are similarities, but there are differences as well between a sensitive and a sensitized skin. Let's look at the characteristics. The skin will feel heated, so it'll feel warm. Have you ever felt yourself get warm when you're embarrassed or when you're actually a little bit stressed out? So there are internal inflammatory pathways that are connected to the brain as well. So there's a lot of things that actually stress us out that show through our skin. So heat is one, redness, itching. I know I get a little bit itchy if I've done a run on the outside and I've come back in out of the uh, cold weather into a forced heated uh, place. My home is, ha has central heating. So when I'm having the shower, I feel the sensitivity. I feel the itch, the tingle. There could be swelling, flushing and blushing. The rosiness doesn't really go away as quickly as it did when they were a lot younger, but it lingers a little bit longer. Those are some other telltale signs, tingling, burning, um, itching, and this is huge, everyone, tightness. Look for the signs of dehydration. You're going to see me talk about that when I'm dealing with Monique today because, hey, they could be even oily, but if they have oil but are dehydrated, that tightness can lead to infection or invaders coming in and agitating or irritating the skin. So look for ability to hydrate the skin as you're also calming as well. So some of the common triggers that you're going to note or kind of keep your eye open for when you're going through the consultation are, you know, you can even ask them, you know, how do you feel after you've had your shower? Do you do your skin care, your face routine in the shower or at the sink? It could be harsh water. It could be them traveling. Maybe they have come from the West Coast and now they're on the East Coast. Well, there's two oceans there, but if they settle somewhere in the between in good old Ontario, the water is going to be a little bit different here. I guarantee you. So that's one thing. Look at the harshness of the water, uh, astringents, soaps. If someone's using soaps or harsh ingredients, these are all triggers that will exacerbate that, that blushing and blushing, that irritation in the skin. Spicy foods. I mean, it can never, uh, you know, uh, surprise me enough that usually fair skin and uh, light skin, they love their spicy foods, which is great. And I know for myself, it's culturally embedded in our food. I don't like spicy food, believe it or not. But spicy food, hot foods, jalapenos, that can send a surge of redness and heat in the skin. Hot showers, stress, we talked about that briefly already. Weather, so from the summer to the winter. From the fall, harsh storms that we go through, all these things are things that can trigger. Now the common cold, if they've gotten over a cold, if they're recovering, if they feel themselves running down, look for those signs as well. And lastly, something as simple as medication, a Tylenol can dehydrate the skin. So if a Tylenol can, you can imagine some of these harsher medications that sometimes doctors have to put their clients and patients on. So we need to find that in the consultation card to determine what is the root of that intolerance that we're seeing in the skin. So we talked a little bit about what we see in the surface, what the client is seeing. But did you know the whole concept is a lot more complicated and it's 
deep down. It's deeper than the upper layers of the skin. It is literally a brilliant inflammatory response system in our body that is working to rectify something that went wrong. And it's called our immune system. Thank God we've got an immune system. Your client has to have an immune system. We need that to fight off germs and whatnot. But the same thing applies and holds true for the skin. So let's take a little bit, not too much of the science, but I want to kind of bring you into the world. Some of this is review for many of you. Or this might be a little bit of helpful information to help you understand what's going on beneath the skin's surface. So first of all, the immune system has a plethora of skin cells and different cells in the body that work cohesively together to fight invasion. I want to say that so clearly because it's more than just one cell but it is a beautiful system and you're going to see how i'll call it a few there's your b cells these are some things that we should as skin therapists know your fighter t cells your b cells that carry antibodies as well and the mast cell whenever you feel an itch or burn guarantee you the mast cell is at work it's actually released histamine I know that you recognize that and your clients will recognize that word as well. So if someone has allergies, they have been placed on antihistamines in order to be able to control that. So histamine is where it's swelling and where the, 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 the water retention and the itch and the burn comes from. But it's a part of the defense. It's a kind of a sign to tell you something's wrong. So it's actually a good thing. Look at that squiggly cell, that dendritic cell, the yellow one that you're taking a look at there. And that is actually what we call the Langerhans cell in the epidermis. It's our first line of defense. And you can see it looks different than all the other cells because it's got dendritic arms. I want you to do a photographic memory shot of that because we're going to come back to that particular purpose of that dendritic structure and how that really works with pigmentation. Huge. We're going to understand why our clients wrestle with scarring. We're going to take a look at the inflammatory diseases that can lead to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. But let's take a zoom in on the guy in the middle with the hat. This is the kingpin. This is a macrophage cell, also known as the white blood cell. So the white blood cell is the one that does the work to engulf the infection, whatever it is that's causing the skin to feel agitated, the bacteria, and it engulfs it, it kind of eats it. We call that phagocytosis. So it eats it and destroys it. We're going to come back to his role shortly because it's a phenomenal role. So he is the white blood cell that is really the hero that destroys the bacteria, but he needs his partners in crime for sure. So we can call this like the immune system avengers. We can kind of call this like, you know, anyway, don't get me started. Marvel's my thing, but let's continue. I want to show you here um, a great insight as an example of your skin, my skin, our client's skin, when any injury takes place. That can be a breakout, that can be a bug bite, that can be uh, dehydration that's causing infection or bacteria to make its way in. In this case, it's a twig. It's actually a little splinter in the skin. So what happens is you get that foreign invader, whatever it is, okay? So in this case, it is a, a splinter, gets in the skin, and automatically what happens is that our body initiates an inflammatory response to combat something that clearly does not belong in the skin. So the inflammatory response is triggered by this invader and by the damage, and there are infected cells. You can see that redness around there. There's infected cells that now release a chemical alarm in the body, almost like that uh, the alarm is going off. You know, if you can envision uh, the sound of an ambulance, it's alarming the entire body to alert. So what happens now is all the blood cells start to flow their attention and bring their higher volume of blood to that area. That's the site of injury. So what's happening is you've got your blood cells that are actually 
thickening and expanding to facilitate higher volumes of blood that are coming at a rapid rate. Why? Because it's releasing a lot of fluids. It's bringing fluids, nutrients, and those cells to the scene to start to fight. So there's also lymphatic fluid that's coming. So everything is coming to this area. Next, look at that squiggly purple cell that looks like it's eating something. What happens is your white blood cells, they start to leak and seep out of the capillary walls where the blood's been bringing all these cells to. It starts to seep out into the tissue around it and it's starting to, you got to eat that bacteria, eat and chomp away at that bacteria. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to state this. It also eats and chomps away at the dead cells or the cells that contain the bacteria. So remember that when we talk about our cystic acne and why we can actually see crater scars, because this engulfing can sometimes engulf our collagen. So now that kind of opens a whole world to us. And we now start to see how sensitivity, if uncontrolled, will actually age the skin or cause a degradation of our collagen. It's because our white blood cells have a good heart, but they're not always the smartest cells, okay? So let's finish off and you'll see that as the cell is containing the bacteria, it engulfs it and eats it away. And then the surface of the skin is usually warmer. And just as a sidebar, it's usually to kill bacteria that's present on the surface of the skin. So let's quickly recap what we just talked about. The invasion happens, starts the inflammatory response system in the body. Fluids are starting to be flown uh, and just flowing at a rapid rate to the site. Lots of blood, so the capillary walls flush because they expand and they're bringing all these volumes of blood. So you're getting the redness, the swelling, but all these cells, cytokines and all these inflammatory fighting cells are on the battlefield of your client's skin. So there is a fight. I think it's worth us understanding that when the skin is red, we don't get aggressive. That's not the time that we get all our biggest, baddest products out. We want to help the fight that's already underway because the redness is like, I want to say, drama and trauma that's happening in the skin. So we want to help to control that. And remember the immune cells, they migrate to that area, they leak through the capillary walls and they are engulfing the invaders. So we want ingredients that are going to help to sustain and protect collagen while it's helping to calm and soothe and heal like provitamin B. So that's the dermis, everyone. Let's go a few layers up, a little bit higher to the surface of the skin, and let's talk about the epidermis. Remember we mentioned that squiggly dendritic cell, almost looks like my hand, has dendritic arms that are protruding out of the cell, while the Langerhans cell, as you're seeing in this picture, is higher up. But there's also another uh, dendritic cell that looks similar to it, but it's lower. It is in your basement layer of the epidermis. That's our melanocyte, as you can see the word is kind of cut off there. So interestingly enough, these two cells resemble one another. Therefore, this is your first line of defense. So when invasion comes in and you start to feel a little bit of itchiness or when you've been out in the sun too long and your client starts to notice, okay, I'm starting to get a little bit itchy, I need to put more sunscreen on. That's the langer hand saying, hey, okay, something's happening here. We need to do something about it. So that's your first line of defense. If this is going haywire and it's going uncontrollably wild all the time, it actually stimulates its sister cell, which is the melanocyte. So this is huge. Inflammation, therefore, we understand, is going to, at some point, trigger hyperpigmentation. So that's what a tan is. I mean, we know there is no healthy tan, but if you're out there in the sun, if you've forgotten and you've fallen asleep uh, in the summertime at the cottage, you've noticed that uh, you start to feel a little bit of inflammation, or maybe you don't, but when you go back in and get a glass of water, you've noticed you've gotten darker. That's because your skin is saying, we got damaged. So the pigment cell comes to the scene and it produces more pigmentation. So as a professional, we need to understand that we want to treat 
inflammation, and that is going to help to diffuse and prevent hyperpigmentation. So how do we rectify and manage sensitive and sensitized skin? Remove the triggers. Let's have a conversation, authentic, organic, and honest with our clients. Calm and hydrate the skin. Get your aloes, get your chamomiles on. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Heal and strengthen. Use your vitamins to help to restore strength to the skin and vitality. Shorter professional treatments. Less touching. Less heat. We're not going to use necessarily steam towels. Let's go with cooler towels, perhaps, or maybe no steam. So I know some of us use steam in our treatments, in our demos here on the webinar. We don't, but we're understanding that usually you want to keep the skin moist. But maybe for sensitive skin, you're not going to use any steam at all. And definitely you want to use your workhorse cosmeceutical ingredients that are really going to deliver results. Let's now shift gears and go into our Dermo 28 solution. So what in the lineup can treat, and I've got some pictures of some images, and this is gonna lead us right into our demonstration with Monique shortly. So obviously when you're dealing with a sensitive or sensitized skin, ladies and gentlemen, we've gotta talk about the comfort line. The comfort line is going to make an intolerant skin more tolerant. And that is everything in your pink and white packaging. So let's divvy up some categories. I did that already for you. You're welcome. And let's go into some of the options that you can do to treat them. So treating flushing and dehydrated skin. So take a look at this young lady's skin. You're seeing here that she's probably starting to see signs of aging because she's an older skin. You're seeing the textures a little bit more uh, thicker and you're also noticing there's now pigmentation associated with that flushing and blushing. Okay, so remember, sensitivity leads to aging. This picture now is a younger skin, delicate, almost still when it looks harmless. But I'll tell you, this young lady, probably a teenager, if untreatable, if untreated rather, will in a few years start to see aggressive aging in her skin. Now, here we can see a more mature client that has sensitivity. But remember, with that flushing, that blushing, with that uh, trauma and drama happening beneath the skin all the time, we are going to note that the aging of the collagen will degrade even more. So Comfort has a plethora of, line, of products in the collection to really help to build, to restore, and to heal as well. Let's jump to this category. And as you're looking at this picture, it can be a little bit difficult for our clients to see that in the mirror, I know. So managing inflammatory disorders is a very serious thing. And we wanna be able to treat our clients with dignity, with respect, but give them results as well. I wanna state everyone that if it's stage three or stage four inflammatory uh, acne, it probably is beyond the realm of your touch. You might want to go into your modalities, some of your laser treatments, or if it's stage four, they may need to consult with a dermatologist for some medication. And there is a place for that. So we don't want to negate that when it is needed. But stage one, two, and even early three, we can do some things with managing the inflammatory lesions of this acneic skin. Let's blend in both pura as well as comfort. Monique, my client, is gonna, you're gonna see she's got, I've done a consultation with her already. She's got some acne concerns and she's got sensitivity concerns. So you're gonna be seeing me marry the two together and that's so doable. You wanna be able to bring those two together. And if you're going to treat one first, then the other, always treat the inflammation first. That is key, that's priority. Bring the drama down. Bring the drama down in the skin, because then we know we're going to bring some control to the area, okay? It's not going to degrade rapidly for us. Then you can get your more aggressive acids and get your more aggressive ingredients in there as well. But something you want to marry in there is salicylic acid for sure, because that's both antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, as well as calming and soothing. And always, as I mentioned earlier, be sure to conduct a thorough consultation. So gentle mix, milk is from your comfort line. I've color coded this for you. You can see that you can choose from so many different options, but go down to your third bullet there. 
And we're going to be talking about even our uh, professional treatments. This is our Pura therapy, which is amazing because it is both a hybrid therapeutic corrective treatment with a peel. Now, I'm going to be using not this on Monique today. I'm going to be using the equivalent in our comfort line, which I've got ready for her. But the pro therapies are amazing. So I'm going to be using comfort therapy because I know her skin needs more calming and soothing ingredients as well. But let's get a little bit of a, a, a glycolic and a lactic in there also. Okay. So what about before, during, and after your medical procedures? We definitely have options for all of the above. Day spas, medi spas, working with doctors or not. Um, again, we want to be able to treat the skin effectively. So we want to focus on calming and repairing. I'll say that again, calming and repairing. Use these words, practice using these words with your client. Okay, today, Joanne, I wanna focus on calming and repairing the skin. We'll be doing our treatment, our laser treatment today, or we're gonna be doing our various aspects of our microneedling or what have you, but I'm gonna help and I'd like to recommend how we can assist that skin to expedite its healing after you go home today. So this is what I'm gonna recommend that you use at home. And also in your call, a confirmation call, you can actually say, this is what I'm going to recommend that you not use. We want to ease off of products leading up to and ease off of products after. But everything we do choose is about calming, hydrating, and shielding the skin. I like to submit everyone, that's your comfort line. Okay, so gentle milk, uh, recovery complex, recovery cream, even a little bit of your soothing um, uh, uh, treatment that you apply on. I'll show you that at the very end of our treatment today. And also you see Cozyme Complex. That's amazing for your device and your modalities because it helps to restructure the skin. Treating delicate and intolerant skin, keep it simple. Again, that's kind of our rule of thumb here. Don't overwhelm with so many products. Start within the comfort line. If your client says, oh, I break out, I have an allergic reaction to everything, you'll hear them say that. So if not sure, what you'll like to do is maybe consider doing a patch test. Do a patch test with some of the products that you're thinking of using, and you want to apply it maybe behind the neck near the ear. So it's a delicate area, but it's inconspicuous at the same time. Another uh, patch test area is inner wrist or inner elbow. And then a true allergic reaction actually is quite complex. It takes sometimes 40 eight to 72 hours to manifest. So you wanna be able to see this, call your client, email, text, find out how their skin is feeling, and then you'll know where you can go from there. And I did that with Monique already. I had her come in for a trial patch test treatment and it was amazing. And I was able to connect with her and she said she loved how her skin felt because she wasn't sure what she is allergic to. Some of your clients do, may need to consider doing an allergy, allergy test. So seeing and consulting with an allergist if they're not sure what they're allergic to. So I know that Monique has discussed that with me in her consultation, that she will be planning on doing that as well. Okay, so from there, you gradually increase their products. Start with minimal, like three at best, even maybe two, <laughs> and then build up from there. So remember we said sensitive skin does age quickly. So let's not be afraid to get our acids in there. So the therapy, comfort therapy that I'm gonna be using, you're gonna see that Monique is a young client, so she's not aggressively aging, but I know it's gonna be great to treat her inflammation that we're seeing on a therapeutic level. But if I had a client who was more mature, she would see great results with this as well. And I would send them home with their home therapy. Those are those four vials that you see at the top. They are treatment peels and therapeutic healing treatments that the client can do at home. We only have these in Unica, in Comfort, and also in Aqua. Phenomenal home peels that are a home version of your professional box peels. And lastly, before we shift now, I got to talk about our um, Illumina line. So we have our brightening line, which targets scarring post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation because sensitive skin 
does have pigmentation that's going on as well. So we want to be able to treat that. And that's why I've got my um, Illumina Comfort, uh, sorry, my Illumina Therapy, which are professional peels, and anything in the Illumina line is amazing to help to bring that client towards the close of treating the hyperpigmentation that they have noticed. Phew, we've gone through a lot of content and I hope that helps to help you understand a little bit more about what's going on beneath the skin. It's quite complex. So as I mentioned, we went ahead and we did a very thorough consultation did the patch test, found that her skin loved everything, which I was really excited about. And um, even when she came today, she was continuing to say how much she loved what her skin was experiencing. See, a lot of your sensitive clients, I'm just sanitizing my hands, they're nervous. And they have a right to be because their sensitive skin has always reacted to this, always reacted to that. So to set them at ease, we want to make sure that we take the time to say, okay, you know what, let's see if there's anything that doesn't necessarily agree with your skin. And then let me know and stay in contact with them. So I've done that. She loves how her skin's feeling. She's building up her confidence with Dermo 28 and with my professional judgment as well, because the client gets to know her skin therapist also. So with that being said, today she's all ready to go. We've already taken the time to cleanse her skin. Again, the cleanser that we would use in this case would be our gentle milk. Now, this is a comfort line. We would double cleanse with this. We do her skin analysis, take the magnifying lens really close to take a look and see what's happening after the first cleanse. And this has your calming properties. It has your alcohol-free cleansing agents. So this is sulfate-free. It doesn't strip the skin. One of the things I, just, I had in my consultation with Monique, I was able to determine that she was using sometimes a cleanser that stripped the skin, that made it tight. So remember, whenever the skin's tight, it's open, it's defenseless. So we wanted to make sure that we seal and hydrate. So that was what I focused on in my conversation with her. So after that, then we're going to go ahead, we would rinse the skin and the toner that we would use for Monique as well, which is what I've already done for her, would be our gentle toner from the comfort line. Again, calming properties to bring down inflammation at a rapid rate, alcohol free. Again, all of the comfort line is paraben free as well. This is something that we're very, very passionate about to ensure that we are not compromising the health of the skin with any harsh ingredients. Okay, so going ahead, what we're doing is now that we've cleansed the skin, we've analyzed the skin, we've double cleansed again, and then we set it up with our toner, we're now going to go ahead and start with our, I know it sounds like a broken record, because every treatment that we want to do, we don't want to go into it without crema achida. Now, for those of us who remember crema achida is just the massage medium, it's more than that. It is your anti-inflammatory agent that really helps to bring down irritation. So my client's skin is cleansed. Um, I can also now go into my next aspect of really treating the skin, but I want to bring down inflammation. So I do this as my prime or my priming step before any type of treatments that I offer in Dermal 28. Remember, before you do peels, before you do masks, before you do serums, before you do anything that's going to give a little bit more of a kick or therapeutic aspect treatment to the skin, make sure the skin is going to receive this readily. So I am just going ahead and I'm making sure my touch is extremely light. I want to make sure my touch is not causing excess stimulation but I'm not intimidated by the redness because I know that her skin through my consultation and through my cleansing, I already know that her skin is uh, kind of leaning towards the side of being touch sensitive. And you might notice that commonly with your clients as well. Just remember, keep your touch light. And when the skin feels that there's excess pressure, even as light as it may be, it starts to get into its defense mode. But this is bringing ingredients into the deeper levels to ensure the skin is acidic, 
it's defended, it is less alkaline. If your client is using soaps or harsh astringents, it makes the skin alkaline. So that is our first step to ensure. And because we know that harsh water can also exacerbate sometimes as a trigger, some redness, remember, we're not gonna rinse this. So we wouldn't rinse with water, rather, we're gonna rinse with our pH regulator from the aqua line. So in my decisions for what I was using on Monique, I decided to go with less product. I don't have my Nutriage out. I don't have my Unica out because it's not really needed for her. And I'm just going to focus on calming and killing any bacteria. Now, in my analysis, um, I'll just share with you what I have, what I've noted. In my analysis, and if you were an analyzing her skin, you would see this as well, that she's got redness. She's got not an acneic skin, but more of a sensitive skin, but she does have some breakouts. Now the breakouts are more on the condition side, which means that they're less of a skin type. She's not acne in her skin type, but she is having some acneic breakouts. Now her acneic breakouts are sometimes hormonal. She's got a few near the chin. So I'm going to do a little bit of direct high frequency a little bit later at the treatment. I did that before. She loved the results and we saw some great results in her skin. And then she also has a little bit of, actually it's much better than the last time I saw her, a little bit of um, breakout activity in the nose wing area. Now this is not rosacea. And we had a conversation thoroughly myself and Monique before, and she was wondering if it could be rosacea, but she doesn't have rosacea. She does have some sensitivity um, and it's genetic because she's always had that from a little girl, but she also has noticed that with stress, she's in school right now. I did ask her on a level of one to 10, one being very low, 10 being super high, what her stress levels are at. And she confirmed that they're definitely at a nine. So students usually have that, and that's very commonly found within our clients. So what I've decided to do is I'm now going to go ahead and put together a treatment that's not only going to be calming, soothing, but it's also going to help to be de-stressing. So I've taken my therapy peel. I'm just going ahead and I'm putting that in my container now. Package one with package number two. And it's a therapy treatment that also helps to correct. And it also helps to digest dead skin cells. Because acneic uh, conditions are contributed by a buildup of dead skin cells, yes, excess oil, but also as a result, of the fact that there is some um, clogging of the pores. Now at the same time, this comfort therapy, as I've mingled my two together, goes on with a very light touch. It is a light peel. So it's not aggressive. If you remember from our aging uh, webinar, it's not as aggressive as your Vita Peel or Vita Peel Plus. This is your milder peel because it's focusing on doing a phenomenal, corrective, deep healing therapy for the skin because it's your comfort therapy. So this is why I think it's gonna be great for my client today for a few moments. I've already primed her skin to receive it. And with the sensitive skin, you're thinking, oh, Charmaine, okay, you're going with a peel? That's a little risque. Um, again, there, are, there is a glycolic in there and there is also your lactic acid and mandelic. But the thing that you want to bear in mind is that this is on a smaller percentage level, whereas it's now acting as a vehicle to carry healing chamomile, healing panthenol into the deeper layers of the skin, these active ingredients to go in and heal, help the battlefield. Remember, that's where the war is happening. Now, I do want to be sensitive to my clients. So, Monique, can you tell me on a scale of one to 10 if you're feeling any type of activity on the skin right now with the peel? I'm feeling a two. 
okay, so she's saying a two. Isn't that interesting? Because last time I used this on her, it was more a little bit higher, wasn't it? Like yeah, a, it was like a three or a four. It was like a four last time. So her skin is already responding in a great way. So obviously her stress levels are not as high today, although that they are still kind of, you know, with being a student. Um, but a, a two, that's definitely manageable. Mm -hmm. Now the activity probably is determined more uh, than anything than the, with the dehydration. So the more dehydration a client feels, the more activity they're going to feel. So I'm going to remove this for the purpose of a demonstration, but I wanna remind you everyone, whenever you're using any of the pro peels, it is a 10 minute segment. So go ahead and include a great massage. Go ahead and include maybe a scalp uh, pressure point treatment massage or hand, whatever else it's going to add a de-stressing impact on the client's experience. Because when the client is de-stressed, the skin responds better. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start to rinse. I've already prepped my water. And um, with our pro peels, there is no neutralizing, even with our Vita peels. So we just go ahead and we neutralize it with the water because the water is at a seven on the pH scale. So my water is rather cold, which is actually really nice on a inflamed skin. Remember heat, you know, exacerbates it and uh, extreme pressure and too many things happening at once. So we're keeping it simple. We are keeping it to a minimal uh, of a few ingredients to calm, soothe. In this pro treatment, we threw in some actives there to really help to correct and protect but we wanna make sure that the skin is completely um, free of any residue. So we advise that you go ahead and you rinse about three times. If in doubt, go in your fourth time. So after your pro peel, which is your pro therapy, which would have been on for 10 minutes, um, bear in mind what you might wanna you know, shave out of your treatment. A sensitive skin should not be worked on, especially if this is your first time working on the client. It shouldn't be the same duration of time that your more coarse, uh, thicker, younger, or even more delicate or even more aging skin can handle. The reason that is, is because a 60 or even, you know, a, a longer treatment, um, 90 minute treatment, should not be the time that you're using on a sensitive skin. We like to say, cut this down to sometimes even a 30 or a 45 minute treatment period of time. So that's going to give you some great results, but it's not gonna have you working on the skin so much. Less time, less heat, less pressure. These are some of the, the rules that you want to incorporate to be effective in treating your client's delicate skin. So now that we've done that, we have rinsed. So I know what you're thinking. Let's go ahead and let's tone, right? So we're going to grab our gauze. I'll use one gauze this time. And we're going to tone with our gentle toner. So our toner is going to minimize redness. It's going to calm and soothe with healing uh, niacinamide, healing provitamin B. It also has your aloe and arganian. Uh, kernel oil extract, which is extremely healing. That was also, by the way, in some of our other formulations that we use, like our cleanser, as well as our pro peel. And we'll be using that when we go into our serum as well. So with that being said, we have toned the skin, made sure that it's now back at that ideal pH of an acidic mantle. And now let's go ahead and use our antidote to any sensitivity. I swear this is your go-to product when dealing with psoriasis, eczema, any type of sensitivity, it is your recovery complex. Because it is such a refined serum, ladies and gentlemen, you need no more than that. This little amount should last you a while and it's enough to go over the entire skin. So I'm gonna place this on Monique's skin for us today to show you how we can devise a customized and a tailored mask experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and use, yes, two masks. 
So my gentle mask is maybe my first one because in my skin analysis, I know her cheeks are a concern for her, but within the forehead and the chin area, she does have some acne as conditioned. So I'm gonna use my purifying active mask as well. Remember those tandem together really work wonders to treat the skin on an unprecedented level. So let's go ahead and let's get our calming on first, which is going to focus on calming, soothing, bringing down any alarm in the skin, helping the white blood cells and all the other inflammatory cells to fight back, keeping our brush as flat as possible because I realize that when the skin is already sensitive, going in this way can add a little bit of a prickling on the skin. And we don't wanna cause any more um, irritation in any way or form to the skin. So I'm also gonna take this to the neck. Now I do wanna state this, this is very, very important for us to bear in mind because your masks do not have to go on thick. They do not, I'm gonna put this on the nose as well. It does not need to go on thick because it is only working on the surface. What has already penetrated, which is what we wanted, is our amazing complex, the recovery complex to heal, to soothe. So we don't need to focus on really getting it so much on because you're going to waste your product. So with that being done, we're gonna go ahead and do our secondary mask purifying active mask which has salicylic acid it also has your mandelic it also has your um, azelaic acid which helps to control excess uh, skin cells which are clogging the pores and it also helps to control inflam inflammatory responses um, infection breakouts bacteria, all of the above. So the forehead had a little bit. Now bearing in mind after doing a peel, and if you are going to be using your purifying mask, active mask afterwards, just applying it over those breakouts there, there will likely be more activity. So you want to be cognizant of that for the client. So I'm going to ask you, Monique, how is that feeling? Are you feeling any uh, thing a little bit out of control or is it a little bit more active? Can you feel it? Um, it feels pretty good. I feel like okay. on a scale of one to ten, it's probably like a three. Okay, so a three for the active mask. Mm -hmm. Now it's interesting because when I did this before on my model, um, she did have a higher reactivity in terms of why? Well, we just finished removing the peel. So the purifying active mask also has your menthol, so it's very minty. So sometimes a client who's sensitive, likely to more of a reddening of the skin, will feel that activity more. So be mindful of that when you're treating your acne clients that also have inflammation, okay? So again, this is where you've customized, you can tailor, you wouldn't mix the masks together, but you're going to see what parts of the skin need it more. We are going to pretend and fast forward and share that, you know, this client has had that full relaxing experience. We've given another added value to her treatment with another maybe relaxing touch point as well. But now we're going to rinse off our mask. So it's about 10 minutes. If you're shaving down the whole time of your treatment, you might want to bring it even down to five to seven. Bearing in mind that for a mask to be effective on the skin, you need a minimum of five minutes, maximum of 15, but you see and your clients can feel great results within five minutes. Now, unfortunately, we haven't had this on for five minutes on Monique, but she knows the costs of being a model on the webinar. She's going to, um, I'll fix her up after, don't worry. But we are gonna remove this for the purpose of it being a demonstration that's live and or recorded for those watching it later. But again, just showing us that this is going to help to treat multiple concerns at the same time. We are going to be able to bring that redness down with the layered approach, with the complex going underneath the mask. We are able to really send those active ingredients to the deeper layers of the skin where those inflammatory cells are on the battlefield of fighting invasion. So the redness is the indication to us on the surface 
that that battle is going on. So that's why active ingredients are so important to get on the skin. And we go ahead and we use those in refined, very small molecular sizes like complexes, like our therapy pro treatment and so on and so forth. So I just wanna make sure I've taken everything off for the client. You'll find that what's great about the masks is that they don't cake on the skin, but you do want to make sure you've removed it completely and thoroughly just for the sake of the client's comfort. And again, noting that that process of reduction of reddening in the skin is a process. So you are going to see it gradually get more brighter in, ten, in terms of the evenness of the skin and the redness lessening as well, okay? We just added our water in, so let's quickly follow up with a little bit of a toner. Now, what I'm also going to talk about now as I'm finishing her treatment is I want to introduce another set of active ingredients. Now, if I were to ask you in a live setting, I would ask you what other properties should we be in mind or keep in mind that we want to deliver to the skin or what other um, condition do we want to be mindful of to prevent when dealing with sensitive and, break, and broken up skin? And the answer would probably come back as treating the likelihood of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So we can do that and we can ward off any pigment because inflammation equals pigmentation. We wanna do that with the Illumina line. So I'm going to do that for my client today as well. But before I do that, I did tell her I wanted to quickly treat her lovely uh, little visitor at the bottom there. So I'm going to just take a little dry gauze in this case, and I'm just going to place it over. There's two breakouts. There's one here, and there's another one just on this side. And I am going to use my direct high frequency. So I'm just going ahead and I'm going to turn this on. And this is giving our ozone to the skin, which is adding a little bit more of an antiseptic aspect to the skin. So I'm only going to touch this on the areas where she has the breakouts that are inflamed. And I've tested this with a client because usually a client could be, doesn't know necessarily, machine phobic. So I've shown this to her, I've tested it on her arm so she knows exactly what I'm gonna do. And I'm just going to place it over the area, lift my finger off to activate the ozone, which is antibacterial. So a little insight, a little joke between me and Monique. So she had this little bit of a breakout last time I saw her and she didn't know what this machine was. So I explained it to her. Some of you probably have had the similar experience with your clients. And um, I said, let me go ahead and do this for you. She's like, sure. Well, anyway, she came back that next week and she emailed me saying she literally saw the breakout dispersed within a day. Or was it less than a day? I think it was less than a day within, <laughs> within 24 hours, which is amazing. But as skin therapists, ladies, we know that this is highly effective to be able to bring down inflammation. And it's only a controlled delivery of ozone. So the bigger the gap, we're gonna create more ozone on the skin. So I'm just doing a little bit on one little guy on the forehead as well. And that's often really nice to do nearing the end of the treatment as well, ensuring that you can help to treat the client's experience as well as what they hope to receive. Now, I also wanted to show you before I finish off with our serum and moisturizer, that if you did want to do the whole steam towel, that's a no-no with sensitive skin, remember? But what I had ready is I could have done my cool towels. I just kept them in a bowl. So if you are using towels in your treatment room, go ahead and use cool towels. Make sure it's not in the hot towel cabinet. You do not want to add uh, additional heat to the skin. So this would have been nice to remove the mask or even my peel 
had I wanted to do that. But sometimes rinsing is just fine as well with a soft gauze, especially if the client might be a little bit sensitized to the coarseness of the towel. So watch the texture of your towels as well. So last but not least, let's now go ahead and throw in our brightening complex. I'm going to put this underneath our moisturizer because I want to make sure that our client has a bright, even skin tone and that inflammation that's been lingering on her skin, the cheeks, the random breakout she's been having are not going to show up a little bit later in the form of uh, hyperpigmentation or any type of uneven skin tone in the skin. So it pretty much slips into the skin nice and easily. And then I'm going to now take my eye product, which is our gentle eye cream, which is literally an emulsion. And I'm going to apply that gently around the eyes for Monique. And I like to take it around the outer lip area as well. But I'm gonna use one more product that I love for the lips that I have to show you. And that product is our soothing formula. Yes, this is the new triage line, but this is a dimethicone or a silicone texture, but it's a breathable silicone, dimethicone that is going to create an invisible shield between a sensitive, intolerant or raw skin. So let's say you've done a medical procedure. Let's say you've done a peel and the skin is raw, it's tender. She has been experiencing sensitivity and discomfort. Take this and you're going to apply it to the areas, perhaps down a deep nasolabial fold. Perhaps it's around where she's tended to peel a bit or frost around the mouth if you've done a, a, a peel at some point or around the eyes. In this case, I'm gonna take it to Monique's lips. And I'm also going to just take a little bit to those nose wing areas where she does have that constant flush and blush. I wanna create an invisible glove between the outer air and her skin. Create a comfort environment for her skin to heal. That's really what I'm doing there. And then lastly, we're going to moisturize the skin um, I talked to her earlier on about the importance of SPF and she was all over it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do my mattifier active cream with an SPF of 15. So this is so important. And again, you could also choose to do an anti-inflammatory moisturizer. In this case, it is your recovery cream. There's no SPF here. So you would follow up with your SPF 50, which is in the Illumina line. But in talking to my model earlier on and doing even a little bit of a patch test before, she's decided that she really does really want to use an SPF within the system. So we're just going ahead and doing this to add moisture, to add uh, protection from UV radiation, as well as an environment that controls bacteria and inflammation. Salicylic acid is in here on a small level to control inflammation and bacteria. And with that, we are done. It is that simple, but it's not so simple, if that makes sense. It's a complex therapy that's brought through a simplistic methodology. So where sensitivity and sensitive skin and sensitization can be a drama to the client, it doesn't have to be a drama in your treatment room. Know what you can use. Blend your collections, comfort with your Pura, with your Illumina, or just start off with comfort and do a little bit at a time. What I would finish off with my client is obviously recommendation of what you should take home because that would complete our professional treatment. Okay, so without further ado, that is all for today. I want to thank you for your attention and your time. It was a shorter treatment, but again, you know how you're able to really adjust that for your clients. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can email me at charmaine at dermo28.ca, and you can ask me any questions at all. We'll follow up with sending you this recorded link and also remember our next webinar next month is November 25th. It's all about how to be confident recommending clients to your retail products. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day, everyone. Monique says bye as well.